you grew up in Jamaica. Can you tell me about life there and what life was like growing up for you? I, I grew up in Jamaica. Um, life was just, uh, you know, it, it was just different. It was, it was comfortable. I didn't really think too much of the world. You know, when you're a kid, most of the time, you know, it's just fun. You know, everything is just fun. You feel invincible. You feel strong. You're not really worried too much. And you're just trying to have fun and enjoy yourself. So life back home was, you know, we didn't have much. Uh, we make the best of it. I remember making all my toys. So the first time I got here and I had to, uh, you know, I saw toys that you can play with that, you know, you don't have to make by yourself. I was like, whoa, that, that's incredible. <laughs> we used to make our gold cards. You know, we used to make uh, kites. We used to make our trucks. Anything we can find, we can be creative and make a toy out of it. You know, we used to make birds. And it's just it's crazy. So it just made me really appreciate a lot of things, um, just making that transition. I'm from New York as well, so uh, I know all about Jamaican food and mm-hmm. stuff. If you had to choose one dish, like just one that you can have, which one is it? A Jamaican dish? Yeah, one Jamaican dish. Ackee and sawfish with fried dumplings. It's best. <laughs> all right. You know, not too many people go for like a breakfast dish, so that's nice. Yeah, it's, I can have a breakfast, lunch, or dinner, man. A lot of people probably go for the whole, uh, what do you call it, uh, jerk chicken and all that. I'm over it. It's, it's common. You know, I'm not a fan of the spice too much. Jerk chicken I love, but my all-time favorite dish is the ackee and sawfish. Um, some kind of white rice, you know, or just that dumpling, fr- uh, boiled dumpling or fried dumpling, or banana, yam. That's it right there for me. Yeah, now I'm hungry. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how was the transition, you know, going from Jamaica to New York? You touched on it a little bit, but as a teenager, how was your transition, and and uh, how did that really mold you going forward? The transition coming from New York, I'm sorry, from uh, Jamaica to New York, it was just a learning experience. The best way I can explain it, it's like being thrown in the jungle, you know, no guidebook. And New York is probably one of the toughest and hardest places to live. They say if you can make it there, then you go anywhere else, you have that confidence just built in to say, I can make it anywhere else. And, you know, you you can tell when someone's from that New York area that it's just very, they're hard, you know. Like, I'm out here in Portland, everyone's so nice out here. I'm not used to that. In New York, if someone's very nice to you, like, all right, what do you want? Yeah, there's a different motive behind it. (laughs) Exactly. Well, in Portland, it's like the total opposite, but it was a big transition, and then uh, I just had to kind of figure stuff out the hard way, and, you know, in the beginning, I was scared, but the older I realized that I'd been coming out of my comfort zone, and that's just how to, you know, mold and shape me. You know, everyone has a different way of being brought up, but, you know, if I have to go back, I wouldn't change anything because it kind of made me who I am today, and it built that confidence in me to, you know, look at things a little differently. How did you first get into MMA and uh, in combat sports in general? Because I know growing up in New York, it wasn't something that was prevalent. I mean, it was boxing when I was growing up, but you didn't see too many, like, mixed martial arts places. How did you get involved with that? I, um, I was getting picked on in school a lot. Uh, my mom wanted to put me in there to build confidence, but right before that, I, uh, I taught myself I taught myself how to play uh, how to fight by playing video games I would um, I played this video game called Tekken it was a fighting video game and uh, it was 3D but I remember before the bullying got out of hand I spoke to my mom to do karate because I was always fascinated by it and I remember being in Jamaica I saw maybe one segment as a kid we didn't even have TV for that long, and you know? I was just intrigued. So coming here, I was like, oh, let me do it. My mom couldn't afford it. So I would play this game called Tekken, and I would play it every day, and I would just practice the moves in my living room over and over and over until I picked it up. And around that time, I realized I have the ability to learn from just watching, which in a lot of cases, a lot of people do, but 
I'll just look at something and I'll do it. And coming from a video game standpoint, it was pretty interesting. And then when the bullying got a little out of hand, my mom decided to really put me into uh, martial arts. They were looking at me. They were like, "How did how did you how do you know all this?" And I just couldn't tell them. Hey, man, I stay home and play video games. <laughs> and uh, um, <laughs> next thing you know, uh, you know, opportunities came. And again, it was outside my comfort zone. And my coach was like, "You know, you can be a fighter." And I was like, "No, I just want to train. I just want to get better." Because in my mind, I just wanted to see how well I could get. But I didn't know there was a different life of it where I can compete. And um, from there on, it was just another journey. When was it when you decided, like, man, I can turn this into a profession? And even beyond just fighting, when did you know, like, this is going to be my career? This is what I'm going to do? You know what? It, it's hard to say. Uh, I just remember doing uh, NYPD versus FDN1. That was my first fight. Uh, I was on the, I think I was on the F the FBNY side because I, I knocked out a police officer. <laughs> but um, it, 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 that was fun. But um, it, at the time, I didn't really realize or I didn't say to myself, I can make this a big career. I just want to get better. That's always been a boy. I'm going to be this type of champ. I'm going to be this type of champ. And even now, I look at it, you know. And, you know, the goal is to get the gold, you know, the belt and everything. But to me personally, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I feel bigger than that. That's just become better overall as a fighter. You know, you get the belt, and it's just pretty much just you know a statement. Like if you're a black belt in real life, it's just a belt. You know, it's what you really know. But the belt kind of represents where you're at. But me personally, I just want to get good. I want to get better. But as I grow, the opportunities just kept coming, and you know, now I'm doing professionally, and who knows? Maybe there's another chapter from there. Explain to me like what it was like going through the tough house because when you were on the Ultimate Fighter, it was like a phenomenon rarely seen in, in MMA and on TV. Like you became a star overnight. What was that like for you? Obviously, you didn't know the impact it would have while you were in the house, but like what it was playing and everything was on TV. What was that like? That was crazy, man. Watching myself on TV because that was my first time seeing too. But um. It was nuts, and I was, at a, I was at a difficult point in my life where I felt like I lost everything. I lost my job, and I kind of lost my apartment. And I was losing my apartment, I should say. And, um, you know, it was like someone um, sent me an email saying, hey, man, okay, if I had to try out 17, he's coming, and uh, I think you'll do good on it. Because I remember sitting in my bed, and I was just kind of down and out saying, what am I going to do next? And it's like God said, here you go. And I remember I bought a one-way ticket out there, not knowing how I would get back. I had not wanted to come back, so I said to myself, I'm going to make it or move live on the streets out there. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was like over 800 people, I think, and it started like 8 in the morning and ended like maybe 10, 11 at night. I stayed there and did the whole thing. I did the, the interview, and the interview was like the hardest part, you know, where they try to find personalities. And it's funny because the way I got the interview, I, I I was joking with some of the guys, and I did this thing called, um, I, I did an impression of Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> I, because uh, <laughs> they were like, yeah, you should go in there, you should be animated. I'm like, ah, nah, man, I don't want to mess up, it's my only chance. I'm like, come on, dude, it'd be funny. So I went in there right off the bat, you know, I was smiling like Eddie Murphy. I put myself as a real African-American. And I was like, I am here today to do the interview, to be on the show. And I kept, you know, I had the voice and everything. I had plus. And I could tell they wanted to laugh because they were trying to be serious. Like, oh, my God, this guy's really off the boat. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I kept doing that, that, you know, like, I just thought, like, I'm just playing with you guys. And they were like, oh, my God, are you serious? You don't talk like that? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> and uh, they were like, that was funny. And he's like, you know, I like you, man. We'll be looking to work with you, man. You know, I was in there. But being in the house was, it, it was it was stressful. Do you think that the run in the house kind of had a lingering effect on you afterwards? Because a lot of people said that, you know, your fights, your especially the finale and stuff, was a different fighter than what they saw in the house. Do you think that, you know, yeah. just the daily grind got to you? Yeah, um, 
you know what? In the house, I was comfortable, and I had a purpose. I had a real purpose that I could focus on. We had unlimited training. We had access to food. We had TV, no women, no outside activities. It was just what you were there for. And in the beginning, you know, we were all like, we were a team, you know? We were a crew guy that's fighting and all of that. And he said, my kick, everyone just started looking at me differently. The moment I did that kick, even my own team started looking at me differently. And I just, you know, it, it, it viewed in certain episodes where I was just, you know, I had problems, I had issues, but didn't, a lot of stuff would cut out. And I didn't realize what I had to go through, how my own team and the other team was just kind of treating me differently. So I said, you know what, fuck it, I, I'm there for me. It's not called the ultimate friend, it's called the ultimate fighter. So I just went back to a space there, I'm going to chain my ass off. And I tried to outdo everybody in practice. I was doing more than everybody else. And in the class, I would keep going, chill. And my other coach had to yell at me to stop training. They would beg me to stop training. I'm like, no, I'm done when I win. When I win, then I'm done. And I think that's a part of being successful. Like, you, you gotta, you gotta go a little further beyond man, than you know anyone else. And people complain about this, this, and that. And you know, I mean, I was hurt sometimes. I hurt my hand. I hurt my leg. I couldn't show it to these guys. I didn't want them to get best of me. I was studying everybody. I was looking at their weakness, what they were good at. And I just became in this zone where I was comfortable and I was just focused. So after that, you get out of it. So I get out of prison. Um, you know, you get a little distracted. Um, I was a little distracted, plus I had a lot of people in my ear. My own team that I, I went back to, that, you know, I kind of let, got let go from. And when I got back, people were treating me differently. It's almost like they were fake, you know. And I know people when they're fake. So I'm like, wait a minute, a couple months ago I was a piece of shit. Now I'm, hey, it's Uriah. So that messed with me, and then I just I was at a point where I just felt very alone. Where I couldn't even trust anybody. And then a week before the fight, they were trying to get me to sign this contract where I would get him like 33 and 3 third percent, and I would be there for five years. And I was just like, wait a minute, I've been with you guys almost all my life. This is the shit you give me now, like commitment and all that. So to them, I think they knew I was going to blow up. So with that messing in my head, me going out there feeling alone, and then I looked across the ring. And me and Kelvin, we were great friends on the show. He was like a little brother. And knowing that I had to fight my teammate that I built this bond with, it just, it, it, it messed with me. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I was shot. I was like, I don't know what to do. I didn't have jail there to say, hey, man, it's okay, because he couldn't even watch the fight. <laughs> you know, it was both of us. Mm -hmm. And with, with Kelvin... Kelvin had nothing to lose. He had everything to gain. I was that guy. I was that guy to be. I was the hype. So I broke. I really broke, you know. And I, I remember being there and I said, I can't fight this. I don't know how to fight it. You know, I, I don't know what to do. And I just said, you know what? I'm just going to go and gonna have fun. And, you know, it, it came out differently. I lost the finale. And, uh, you know, then you know who your friends are for real, you know, and, and you see who was really there for you in the beginning. And then I lost again after that. Let's see if the really right came back, and then I lost again to John Howard. But I think that was just me training. I wasn't training right, you know, I focused more on wrestling. I forgot what I was good at, which is my striking, the dynamic way of me striking. Yeah. And, you know, you just learn. I don't think I really lose a fight. I think I either win or I learn. That's how I look at it, but Society is just designed to say, oh, nope, you lose, stay there, and let's all focus on it. The moment I lose or I don't do something well, I'm the first to say, okay, what did I do wrong and how can I fix it? But, you know, you got everyone saying, well, this guy's not good as we thought, and then everyone just starting to have their opinion of you. And, you know, if you're not strong enough, you start to feed into it. Definitely. Like, they don't call me the beast. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a beast. I don't know how to kill somebody. But at the same time, I'm in a sport where it's considered you got to do that. So I don't know how to do that. And what got me to that success on the show was I didn't have that mentality to kill you. I just knew what to do. I knew your weakness. I knew how to figure it out. And I had good timing. So when I focused on that, I was so articulate that I got a knockout. And it was just vicious because my timing was on point. Because that's how I fight. I look for openings, I time it, and I execute. So then after that, I was like, oh, maybe I need to be this beast and killer. And it wasn't me. And when Dana 
White said, Uriah Hall is not a fighter. Everyone was like, oh, fuck Dana, da, da, da. And then other people were like, yeah, you know, Dana's right, he's not. And then I kind of asked myself, well, am I a fighter? And then I'm glad he said that because it wasn't to say, oh, I got to pick it up. It made me realize that I'm not the type of person people thought I was. I was forgetting to be me. And the, the person that I am, I, I had fun when I fight. I, I like to, you know, pick up the pace and enjoy what I do. That's incredible because, you know, when you explain it like that, it, it kind of seems like you you fight in real life like it's still a video game. Like, you, you think like you're playing Tekken. Like, it's not, like, you're not out there to kill someone. You're just reacting and counter-reacting no different than you were when you were playing the video game when you were young. Exactly. And it's just all timing and fighting. So it's crazy how, you know, the things instilled in you when you first loved to fight are the reasons why you still fight now. Yeah. So that's amazing. And in, our, in your last fight, people could really see that, and they saw what they considered to be you. What, what changed? Like, what picked you up out of that place, and what really reminded you, like, hey, this is who I am, aside from Dana's words, and how did you get back to that? Um, what changed for me was just, you know, getting what was saying, you know, I, I, I just tried to, I went on this self-searching mode where I figured out that I'm different and I had the honor of meeting the guy named Michael Dye White, he's an actor and uh, he, was, he, was, he was a really cool guy, he was fascinated with my kicks and I was like, dude, I'm fascinated with your kicks and he was teaching me how to throw uh, the spinning cuff a little better and at one point in that conversation he was like, you know, I, I watch you and you know, I, I have so much respect for you and all that stuff and I know a lot of people look at you differently because you're different so what's wrong with being different, man? You know, before that, I was thinking to, to be myself, but when he said that, it just kind of made me say, you know what, I am different, and why am I struggling to be someone that I'm not? You know, I feel like I was struggling to be something that the media and everyone was trying to create. They were trying to create this beast, this new monster, this killer. Meanwhile, I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'll, I'll laugh. Sparring and I have fun in there, and you know, I'll help you. That's the way I am, and I, I just said that society just kind of built this thing on fighting where you got to be this type of person, and I'm not. I feel that it twice because I wasn't. You know, don't get me wrong, I get nervous going there, but for me, it's just, you know, I just, I just want to have fun because that's one of the reasons why I start to do it. And I think at some point in your career, you start to get to having fun, and it becomes a job. And then you just worry about the success of it and the winning and what it comes with. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. But for me, man, I'm not even focused on like when people used to walk, you know, say, hey, man, let me get a, a signature and all that. I, I, I don't want to because to me it's like the signature doesn't really mean anything. I'd rather inspire someone. Because I have a lot of kids who come up to me and, you know, shaking my hand and say, hey, man, thank you for helping me to realize that it's okay to be different and thank you for not quitting your inspiration, keeping what you're doing. Or, and I almost killed myself but when I saw your uh, story, I realized that I have a lot of this when he says it's okay where I am and you gave me the courage to stand up to bullies. I love that part. So the whole fame or whatever, I don't really focus on that. I don't really care about it. I think it stops a lot. My coaches always yelling at me to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> But I know the trolls, you know, so that's why I mean to them. Like, if people come up to me, hey, make you sign my gloves and my what? So I want to even make some money off of me. And then when I say no, you sign my goose bag. So you can't win. But I realize you got to be real. And that's all that counts. Definitely. Um, before I let you go and get back to your training, um, you're in a, no, you're... I'm, I'm pretty much done, man. I'm good. I'm, I'm done training because I have a train later, like, in five hours. Okay, cool, cool. Um, you're in a unique position because your first loss way back in early in your career was to Chris Weidman, who's now a champion. So you faced yeah. the best, in, you know, that's ahead of you. The goal is to work back up to a guy you've already faced and you know how he fights. Is that something that 
kind of like fuels you like you want to get at him again specifically because you've seen him before and you know that you can match that level yes I man you know what and there's this one guy I used to work at his name is Keith I can't stand that guy dumbass <laughs> he used to always say hey man this guy's a great wrestler I'm like I don't care but every time he was just kept saying the same you ready for your fight man this guy's a great wrestler man I hope he doesn't take that he just kept saying it so that fear got in my head and then it just was like a poison and then I remember being down there getting ready to fight. And then my coach at the time, the other gym I trained with, he was like, hey, man, you win this fight, you go straight to UFC. And I'm like, oh, that's the worst thing you can say to me. And then I'm like, all right, let me just survive. I forgot to be there. I forgot that. You know, I, I just wanted it to be over. And I was so focused on the takedown, I forgot about me. I just got to run my way to get back to the top. But I knew I could give it time. I could have did a better job. And it's a definitely a motivator. I know I could beat them. And I'm going to get there, and I'm going to beat them. And it's going to, you know, it, 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 like you said, it's a very unique position. Because I was that guy to beat. So when I get to him, he's going to be that guy to beat. And it's going to be very different. 